Welcome back everybody to Cinelux Crypto. My name is Mike, thank you for being with me here this evening or this morning or wherever you are in the world, whatever you're doing, I hope you're having a great day. So I am going to reveal to you guys my entire portfolio. Yes, I'm gonna tell you all 37 coins that I hold and I'm gonna discuss with you um, some of the high points and some of the low points of this particular um, Rolodex of investments that I have and uh, join me. Let's go through it together. I'm also going to, at the end of this, talk about my five favorite holdings on this list and we will look each one of them up individually and kind of go over each one for just a minute or two just to just to reaffirm where I'm at. It's funny, you know, the, the uh, Telegram channel is growing quite a bit where you have like almost 800 members now and uh, it's gotten so big that there's people in there who don't even know that it's my channel and um, it's funny because they'll they'll talk about a lot of things and I always try to gently refer him to go watch the video that I talked about. So, um, but some of the people who do, they're aware of what's going on. They're, they're asking me, am I still into this? Am I still into that? Have I abandoned this project or have I this and that? And that's why I'm making this video because I want to disclose to you guys exactly what I hold. Um, we're not gonna be talking about amounts. We're just gonna be talking about the fact that I, I do hold, you know, certain cryptocurrencies. And we are gonna go over some of the ones that I have made videos on before because that's the reason why I made videos on them. Um, a lot of people have asked for exit strategy type stuff. I'm not going to be talking about that because right now um, I have an exit strategy if you watched my last video um, you would know kind of sort of what it is but um, eventually when I do start to plan to scale out or entirely abandon a project I will usually let you know first of all in the telegram ch uh, chat and or by making a video so I'm just not there yet because I do think that the bull run is totally going to continue I think we have a really really good rest of this year 2021 ahead and um, I've openly spoke about I don't see a bear market like we've experienced before for several years coming I just don't think we're there yet institutional investments you know lots of stuff going on you guys so real quick before we get into my entire portfolio let's just take a look at the health of the market we're at 2.113 trillion dollars this is awesome um, I remember it was a big deal when we crossed the, the one trillion dollar mark, and now Bitcoin itself is over one trillion. So um, it's you know it's a big number, but really I think it's just a drop in the bucket because so many things are switching over to crypto based assets, platforms, DeFi's, NFTs. So many things are going on. There's still going to be a whole bunch of institutional investment layers coming into Bitcoin. I think you know Bitcoin at just under sixty thousand dollars is a great price, but it's just nothing compared to where we're going just simply based on supply and demand and scarcity. Um, I think that once we do break a new all-time high, somewhere in the 62,000-ish range, I think we're going to kind of have a new um, price discovery mode. I did go on record by saying by the end of April, I do think we'll be scraping the $70,000 mark. So we'll see if that happens. Um, <clears throat> you never know, <clears throat> excuse me, until you get there. But market's looking good. Everything in the top 10 is just, you know, going from red to green to green to red on the 24 hour and the one hour cycle. But I don't see anything that would be any sort of a warning sign. In fact, I think that, like I said, there is a bull run coming. And if you're sitting on a bunch of money on the sideline, try to find the investments that you're comfortable with and try to get a good entry point because I think that things are going to be really good. I've spoken a little bit before about XRP. I've held XRP in the past. I don't hold on any XRP now because they got delisted from everything. But listen, if this case goes the way that I'm hoping it goes um, in ruling in favor of XRP, uh, whether you like XRP or not, we want to see them do well. We want to see them smash the giant that is the SEC. I think that that would kick off not only a bull run for XRP, but it would be really good for the altcoin space because uh, I think it would destroy a lot of fear that people are having, you know, as if, you know, who would be the next target by the SEC. So anyways, enough of that, you guys. Let's go talk about Synalytics Crypto's 37. I, I should say 36 because I do have on my list here um, USDC. Uh, only because I hold a certain amount of USDC to bounce back in and out of, of platforms. So that one doesn't count. So, uh, you know, and I will say, I will preface this outside of BTC and ETH, which I'm not really going to talk about because BTC, it's, it's Bitcoin, it's the, the blockchain, it's why we're all here. And Ethereum is in that special place where, you know, the ERC 20s and the ER 721s and the ER 755s and all these ERCs are running on Ethereum. So um, Ethereum being basically the 
the bridge layer for a lot of the health of the market. And um, I'm not getting into those. But so in number three, we have Ada Cardano. If you guys watch my videos, you know I'm big on Cardano. In fact, I think big things are coming for Cardano in the immediate, intermediate, and long term. I think things are going to really take off. Next on the list is Litecoin. I think they have this listed by market cap. So we'll get to the micros later. But so Ada, Litecoin, I have some link. Uh, I do own some Matic, uh, Polygon, whatever. Omi would be next on the list. Uh, Eternity Chain, Super Farm. I know. You know, the thing is, is I'm, I'm not going to be embarrassed about what I'm holding here um, because I do invest in a wide range of cryptocurrencies from large market to mid caps to, to small caps. And, um, you know, I picked up some Super Farm just because, just in case. I'm not really a fan of the project. I just don't think it's as important as people kind of hype it up to be and you know Elio's smart he's got a great channel and everything I just I don't like the way Super Farm came out I don't like what happened so many people were, were upset about their allocations I got lucky I got Super Farm for a dollar fours and I didn't buy that much of it so I'm just gonna hold on to it if it ever gets to eight to ten bucks I'm gonna sell it and just never even think about it again but next on the list is Polka Starter um, next on the list is uh, XOR Sora big fan of Sora I'm gonna get that Val airdrop and uh, I'm not gonna be letting go of my Sora after the drop because I think that's going to be very involved with the polka dot ecosystem I could see actually I could really see Sora being in the multiple thousands of dollars a lot of people have come out and said it's gonna be um, based on a, a dollar I, I forget exactly what they were saying about it but they were saying it's basically gonna have an unlimited supply so but I, I'm not letting that scare me off I I'm deep into Sora I'm holding it and I like it uh, the next time my list is Koti made a video about that uh, Luxo made a video about that API 3 also made a video uh, Fala TVK. I would like to be getting some more of TVK, by the way. It's at just under 60 cents. I think I bought it like 74 cents. If I could find a way to move some things around, I would love to pick up some more TVK. That'd be great. Um, MRPH. I always think in my head when I see it miles per hour, uh, but that's Morpheus. I, I think I, I actually bought Morpheus a long, long time ago at like sub 25 cents and forgot about it. It's like on my ether scan somewhere. I don't even, haven't even ported it over to like be able to buy and sell or trade it, but I do own some. I've had it forever. I got some Bondly. I've got some B Pro. You guys know I still feel really good about B Pro. I know it had some pullback. I think actually a lot of the pullback for B Pro might have had to do with what was going on with chain games. Not that it was directly related or anything, but I think that um, people realized that chain games didn't actually have those specific contracts. And so they might have applied that to um, things across the board that would be kind of like that, even though B Pro and chain games aren't the same, uh, they do have a lot of the same partnerships and they do. Uh, delve into some of the same areas of cryptocurrency but holding my bpro not going to be selling that anytime soon i think that's going to go big uh val is on there so i'm going to get the airdrop from sora so i do have some val uft i keep telling people what a gem that is Uni unilend finance on binance uh boy these guys when they break they're going to break big they're they're um they've gone down to about two dollars and 43 cents they have a total value of 62 million look this this could be a billion dollar project someday i really do believe that uft is one of my long-term holds i will be holding on to that p pay loving that p pay wish i would have bought more when i when i bought into it but it's still relatively right around the same price that i bought it at but the more i research p pay and the more i start to see other smaller youtubers like myself start making videos about p pay this thing could be really big so if you have some time spend some time looking into p pay um, I do have this thing, Seed Me. I got into Exceed Me earlier. It was one of those things that I was just kind of drooling over. I did jump on Uniswap and got that within the first hour. It was all over the place, just like a lot of those other um, Polka Starter uh, projects or whatever, but I got a good price on Exceed Me, so I'm going to be holding that for a while just to see what it does. YF Die. Mm, love me some YF Die. If you guys have not heard of YF Die, go look into it. The launch pad that they're building and the staking program that they have with 72% APY and the fact that you're guaranteed allocations into their launch pads if you're staking for 30 days. YF Die is a banger. I honestly see YF Die doing really, really, really big numbers and being around for a very long time. They're integrating themselves with a lot of great crypto partnerships and I think that YF Die is something you should definitely put your time towards. Next on my list is Moonswap. I love Moonswap. Of course I love Moonswap. I got into it for 22 cents and made a video about it like, um, you know, a couple days later when it hit a buck 04, I was like, ooh, should I make a video about this? This thing already went up so much. But I, I looked into it. I really liked it, even though it was kind of like, you know, super nerdy out of my league when it came to NFTs and the platform. Moonswap with only um, an evaluation of under $18 million, this thing could really 
really be big. I think this thing could be easily in the multiple hundred hundred million dollar um, market cap. So I will be holding on to my moon swap for a while just to see where it goes. Uh, AMB. Have anybody anybody ever heard of Ambrosius? So funny story about Ambrosius. I actually was going to make a video about this as a hidden altcoin gem. I decided not to because I'm not sure if it's a hidden altcoin gem. Um, well, it's kind of hidden, but I don't know if it's a gem. Uh, so I tied in AMB with um, with VRA because I ended up buying <laughs> I ended up buying these both a long, long time ago. And so I kind of lumped them into the same category. I didn't really do much research on them, didn't know much about them, but I got into them cheap. Um, the AMV that I'm holding onto is more than 10x. The VRA that I got onto has far surpassed that. Um, but I was just looking for something really cheap to invest in. So I think I threw like, you know, a couple hundred bucks at, at each project. And I'm very happy that I did because they're both doing well. And uh, I still think that they're both going to continue to do well. So Ambrosius, if, leave a comment below if anyone's ever heard of AMB. Definitely not financial advice. I'm not telling you to go out and buy any of this stuff. Um, it's just funny how it's been around and part of my portfolio for so long. And it's just kind of sitting there. Next one, Unistake. Oh, gosh. Yeah, what a bummer. So we're going to talk about a couple of these because there's a couple of these on here that, that I would definitely consider mistakes that I've made. Uh, Unistake came out at like a cent or two cents and it People started talking about it, it blew up. I ended up buying it at like 21 cents and I thought it was really gonna be one of those, you know, big, big movers and it just has totally crapped the bed. So super bummed on it. I can't really move it because I don't wanna take a 50% loss. If I feel like if I hold on to this long enough, it'll eventually come back around and as soon as that thing gets anywhere near what I paid for it, I'm dumping this crap coin because I'm over it. Another mistake right here, back to back. See, I'm gonna be transparent with you guys. I don't need to be cool. I don't need to be edgy. I don't need to be the guy that, that can do no wrong. I've made many mistakes and that's one of the reasons why I make videos is because I love to share these things with you guys so you don't do the same thing. The problem with this next mistake, okay, is that I FOMO'd into it. Man, what was I thinking? I, I was I just, I was looking for something to do. You see, getting bored and doing trading when you're bored can really, really hurt you. This is a result of somebody who's basically a pro trader, even though I'm not really a pro trader, but just five years of experience. Like I should know better. I bought XTK. I still think XTK could be a really good project. I think at $14 million market cap, it's got a long way to go. I don't know enough about it to be like going deep diving or making a video on it. I just basically FOMO'd into it and it's worth it's lost about 40%, not a big deal. Could totally make it make a comeback. This is an altcoin market that we're in. So uh, if this thing gets back to where it's near its all time high again, which is almost where I bought it, I'm gonna dump it and get back into something good. Uh, NFY, non-fungible yield. Uh, I'm holding onto this at just a slight bit of a loss, but um, I do think that when NFY or if NFY actually gets going, it could be really big because um, what they're trying to do, I think they're that they have the first mover advantage. I'm not going to get into the details or whatever, but I am holding a little bit of NFY just because I like to take a couple punts on a couple projects because sometimes those projects can make it really big. And if you're smart enough to take profits, then you should be able to at least be sitting on that project for free and no longer be sweating your 40% loss. Talking to myself here. Next one on my list, Waifu. Gosh dang it, Waifu. Um, so I got into Waifu pretty early and then it pumped up to almost three cents. I should have taken some profits on Waifu. I still think that it can do better than its all time high. But then it really had a fat dump. It was like under 0 .00, it was 0 0.0055 and I thought, oh gosh. So I actually picked up some more Waifu and I think at that point I'm going to, um, once that doubles, I'm gonna dump that, get my ETH back and invest in a better project. But at some point, I'm gonna sell a ton of waifu at a decent price. Anything like close to the two cent mark, I'm gonna dump it all and I'm gonna be sitting in a pretty good profit. So I do like waifu. The reason why I do is because they're attacking the um, anime market and it could be really big. So another one that I've never even mentioned here before, but I bought a little bit just because one YouTuber I really like talked about it um, is ASKO, ASKO. Um, I don't know enough about this project to be able to tell you anything about it other than the fact that the market cap is around five million dollars It's really cheap. I forget what it was that I really liked and uh, about this project and made me want to pick it up I have to go watch that video again But I didn't throw enough money about it at it to worry about it if, if this thing does a 10x that's great I'll dump it and never hear from it again. Oh Gosh another embarrassment here ETH yield ETHY man what a mistake that was so I got into ETH yield. Um, 
I don't even know if I can unbury myself from this one. I don't know why I got into E-Field. It just sounded cool. Ethereum yielding. I didn't do, here's the thing. I didn't do my research on E-Field. Had I D-Y-O-R'd like I could preach all the time to you guys, this is why I tell you guys to do that. I wouldn't be sitting on a 75% loss on E-Field. The bummer about it is when I bought it, Ethereum was like around $1,100. I bought like two ETH worth. And now this has gone from $22, whereas the price I bought it at, all the way down to under $5. You know, and Ether has almost doubled since then. So the problem I have with ETH yield that's really pissing me off here is I can't even freaking sell it. Like I get on Uniswap and I try to swap it back into ETH. I try to swap it. I try to atomic swap. I've tried to get, I can't get rid of it. And, and, and that's in fairness to me, the reason why I still hold this crap coin is because I can't freaking sell it. I don't know if it's because there's just not enough liquidity. I've never had an, a, an, a cryptocurrency that I bought on Uniswap that I can't sell. No matter what I pair it with, no matter what I do with it, E-Field. Biggest mistake I think I might have ever made as far as getting into a project without researching it. Totally stupid. I'm bummed. Uh, next project. Ah, uh, one of my bangers, one of my one of my happy happy spots here. UDT did make a video on UDT. Uh, it's at two thousand forty seven dollars. Great price, got into it at six hundred bucks. Um, not even interested remotely in the almost four X that I'm sitting on, because I can see UDT being a over ten thousand dollar coin at some point in the not too distant future. Um, Coinbase Ventures is is attached to them, and if they ever get listed on Coinbase Pro and or Coinbase. And the fact that what they're doing is extremely unique and UDT could be really good. So I will probably do a follow-up video to UDT at some point and we'll talk more about it. But I, I do think that that's going to be a good one. So that's, that's going to be, I'm going to be holding that for a while. So next on the list and second to last is Eland. Uh, we talked about that in the Telegram group. I did talk to you guys about that. Uh, I did make a video on it, at it when I bought it. It was like 26 cents, jumped up to like 42 cents based on some, some news and some hype. It's been steadily down on the decline. I have no desire to sell my Eland. I didn't buy enough of it to be sweating my house payment or anything. Um, but I do, uh, and like I said in the video that I made, it's very high risk, very high reward. Because if, they're, if they can pull off what they're trying to do with you know tokenizing real land, and it, I'm not going to pretend like I know what I'm talking about. I'm sorry. I'm just being honest with you guys. I, that whole thing was over my head. I said it in my video. This is it's big. It takes time to investigate a project like this, and I just really haven't done that. But I don't care. I'm going to sit on it. This could be the kind of thing where you know if this gets to a decent market cap, I mean, this is a potential 50x coin. So I'm going to hold on to it for a while. And I'm not chasing 50x. If this thing hits 10x, 20x, 25x, I'm out. I'm gonna put it back in some of that Ethereum I lost on uh, some of the other crap projects. Last but certainly not least, VRA. You guys know I'm a huge fan of VRA. It's basically my second favorite coin next to Luxo. Um, probably because I got into it at 0.000627. So way less than a penny even. I bought it a long time ago and I've been sitting on it. And the funny thing is, is I almost dumped my VRA um, because they had a token swap and it pissed me off. And I was like, I don't want to deal with swapping these coins over and having to, you know, give me the new token swap. I was like, this is just, I only had a couple hundred bucks worth or whatever. Um, and I'm just really glad I didn't because <laughs> it's, it's done really well since then. It's sitting just under um, five cents or just over five cents. So uh, I don't even know how many X's I've earned on this thing, but I'm not interested in selling my VRA whatsoever. I think that this thing could end up being a billion dollar or a multi-billion dollar project. I'm really, really happy with VRA. So um, uh, that's, you know, one of the five. Let's just pull it up real quick because I'm going to talk about the five that I like the most, which is kind of hard to do because there's a few that I'm going to have to skip, but for sake of keeping the video decent time we're gonna talk about it so vra like i said yeah just over five cents um i think their proof of view patent is going to be a big deal i can see vra even though it's not necessarily like theta i can see this having theta like growth and that's why i'm super jazzed on veracity and not going to sell it anytime soon so any of you people who've been asking in the telegram Yes, just because I don't make a video on something every three days or I continue to pump the same coins over and over and over again like some YouTubers that I know, 
because they're basically shamelessly shilling their bags, which I will never do here. Um, yeah, I'm still in VRA and loving it. So now we're going to go from the top down. Like I said, I'm throwing out BTC because BTC is my long-term plan. Eventually, I will end up 100% at some point in BTC because that's what would be the smart thing to do. Ada Cardano started out my first few videos on this channel making Ada videos. Um, any of you who have seen those videos, you know that by dollar, by sheer dollar amount of my investments, um, Ada is my number one investment because I have more money sitting in Ada than anywhere else because I do think it's a good place to be in as far as steady, slow growth. Obviously, you can see by the disclosure of my list that I do take risks, but I do offset those risks by being in things like Ethereum and uh, Ada and some Litecoin and Chainlink. Those are my, my top uh, you know top tier coins where, where I feel like those investments are safe. So Ada would be basically kind of sort of my alt, my, my 1A, but it's not one of my babies. And um, well, since we're going down the list this way, we'll talk about Omi first, but y'all know Luxo is my baby and we'll talk about that in a minute. But there a few people have actually asked me and I haven't directly responded to them. You know, are you still, do you still believe in Omi? Absolutely. Uh, the VV app is being overrun with too many people at once. So the problems they have are good problems. They can't scale this thing fast enough. So it is kind of bad because the first user experience that some people are having, they're trying to get their DeLorean or their unicorns or whatever the heck they're trying to get. And if they don't get it right away, you know, this world of instant gratification, people like if it's if it doesn't work perfectly seamlessly the first time, they're like, oh, this project's crap. No, nah, I'm going to go sell all their OMI, which would be really stupid if you've made it this far in this video and you don't believe in Omi and you don't have good things to say about Omi, you obviously haven't done the research. Um, just because a project is not getting to a new all-time high every other day does not mean it's a bad project. When they do scale the VV app and they do get some of these, um, par not partnerships, but licenses that they have, look, look Omi's going to be huge, you guys. Part of the problem with Omi is that it came out when it finally got listed and people could see it. It was like almost a two billion dollar evaluation. People were like, "What the heck is this? This two billion dollar project? Like, what? Well, who, who do they think they are? You know?" And the fact that it has seven hundred and fifty billion supply it definitely is a turn off to some people. But see, they don't really do their research and don't realize that there's obviously a burn mechanism involved in Omi. There's a reason why they have that many. Um, coins because they're going to need them. It's a long-term project. They're going to be released. Every time they release something, the price seems to tick up. It's just a matter of time before I think Omi is going to be in the three to five cent range. I, I do have a target of about five cents uh, at some point this year. So for those of you who have asked if I'm, if I'm still into Omi, there's your answer. Okay, next one down the list. Luxo, my baby. I'm so glad that some of the videos that I made on Luxo brought to your attention this project. Because even if you look around at some of the bigger YouTubers, um, outside of Chico, I mean, I, I you guys know I, I trashed, I kind of trashed Chico the other day, just a little bit, just fun and games, but I gotta hand it to the guy, man. I mean, he's the one that turned me on to Luxo first. I also did start to see, I, I heard of it first on his video, then I started to see other people talking about this coin in other, uh, places and I thought, what, what is this Luxo? And I, I just started buying it without really knowing what it was. Um, but I was getting it like, my first purchase was 78 cents. And then I started buying it all the way up to about the $2 range. So every Luxo that I own, if I average it out, is still right around a dollar to a dollar five. Um, I do have a pretty sizable holding of Luxo just because, you know, well, for me anyway, I'm not a baller, but, um, I do really believe in this project. When this thing started to fly, I got super, super hyped on it. And um, I think that this is just really, this is this project is just barely scratching the surface of being uncovered. Um, Altcoin Daily finally did a video on Luxo the other day, yesterday actually, last night, I posted that in the Telegram chat. Um, I think, and he did it because he basically said so many people kept mentioning it. And I thought, here's a project that, even though it's not a micro cap gem, this is basically still sort of an altcoin hidden gem because nobody really knows about it and they don't understand the scope and the vastness of Luxo. They think it's just really about the, the fashion uh, NFT market and it's, it's the more I look at Luxo, the more my mind is blown. I'm gonna have to do more of a deeper dive on this because like I said, this is basically my favorite holding. Um, I do have some pretty lofty targets for this before I even start to scale out of this project because this could be, this could end up being a top 10 token. I mean, there I said it, 
You know I'm not a moon boy. You guys know I'm pretty realistic about my price targets and stuff like that. But this could be a top 20, top 15, at least, you know, top 20 project. Um, once people start to realize that this project goes way beyond what they think they know about it and the fact that Fabian um, is involved and he's going to be doing some really big things with this, love me some Luxo. So, yes, I think anything, and I've said it in public, anything under $20 is a good buy. Uh, a friend of mine, not a friend of mine, but somebody I know, through the Telegram channel the chat was basically like, hey, I just bought some Luxo at just under 15 bucks. And I was like, good on you, bro, because um, you're gonna be happy when this thing's in the multi-billion dollar uh, range. You're gonna be, you're gonna talk about when you picked up Luxo at 15 bucks and you're gonna be happy that you did. Um, so we covered those and was there one more? Is there one more, guys? If there isn't, should I do a bonus? I got VRA, we did OMI, we did uh, Luxo. We did Ada. There must be one more on here. Hmm. Guess it's top four. <laughs> well, just for the sake of living up to what I said, let's get back to uh, YF Die real quick. Um, YF Die, guys. I understand when you look at something that's got a $5,300 price tag, it's like. What's the point? If I can't buy at least a whole coin, why would anyone really, and I totally understand that mentality, I, I get it. I, I got lucky and picked up a couple YF die when it was just under 1800, and um, it was hard for me to pull the trigger at 1800. Um, I'm so glad I did, because I think that YF die might be a project that I actually never exit out of. Um, I know I said I'm gonna end up at 100% BTC, it's probably more like 90 to 95% at some point BTC, because Things like YF Die are special. Um, go look into that project. Find a way if you can, you know, get into the project to stake it and to get those guaranteed allocations on the launch pad because their first uh, launch pad um, IDO, I forget what it's called, but it did really well. And so many people have such high hopes for YF Die. So there you have it, guys. There's my entire portfolio. I would love for you guys to interact by leaving some comments below. Tell me what are your top five, please. Let me know. Tell me what you like or what you don't like about my particular um, list of investments. And tell me which investments basically have been the best ones for you because we like to share information. And by the way, if you haven't joined the channel yet, please subscribe. Um, channel's growing. Loving you guys. You guys have been really great. Please give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down because you think I'm a total idiot. It's all good. Everyone's got their, uh, their opinion that they're entitled to. And uh, like and share if you guys can. Hit the subscribe and the bell button. Hit the bell button. So when these videos come out, you can be some of the first ones to see them because these videos are so important. They're absolutely life-changing. And they're, they're, I'm just kidding. Uh, I'm totally kidding. Um, but it does just, it helps my channel grow and helps me get recognition. So if you want to support the channel, that's all I can ask. You guys are great. Oh, by the way, I am leaving tomorrow early, early in the morning for a vacation. My family and I, we're going to Tulum, Mexico. So my next videos, I will be making videos even though I'm on vacation. And uh, so my next videos will probably have a lot better scenery than just this picture behind me and some lights and, and my stupid face. Uh, although I'm gonna miss my plant. I'm gonna miss um, La Planta Corazon. I gotta make sure she's got enough water. But um, my next scenery will be jungle and Caribbean ocean and white sand and just having a good old time. So. Please keep an eye for those kinds of things and peace.